Hello students, how are you all? Hope so. Very nice preparations are going on for your Jan 25 attempt. Uh, I'm here with a small video for all of you as one of a very small concept of your cost of capital, which is YTM approach yield to maturity, which was asked in your last attempt also. Uh, in the September 2024 paper, this question was asked. I says ask this question. It's a very small concept in your module. So I'm here with a small video for all of you to share that what is this concept about? As we also learned in the class, this for your revision purpose, for your brush up purpose. So have a look to what the concept wants to say to you. What do you mean by yield to maturity? Now yield to maturity, these types of concepts are covered for your bonds. As we have done in the chapter of cost of capital, how to value your debenture, how to find out the intrinsic value and all. In the same manner, in the same fashion, yield to maturity is a concept for bond valuation. So this same concept we have learned somewhere also else that is in the chapter of capital budgeting in the chapter of capital budgeting we know one of the approach is internal rate of return method i would like to give you a small brush up on this so that we can understand what is yield to maturity or what the yield to maturity concept wants to speak about now when i talk about internal rate of return that is irr method and in that method we used to speak or we used to understand that how much maximum a project can earn. What is the maximum percentage? Maximum percentage a project can earn. Do you agree students? We used to discuss in class, we used to speak in class that IRR is the maximum percentage a project can earn. If IRR is greater than company's cost of capital, we used to accept the project. Am I right? Yes. And if IRR percentage is less than cost of capital, we used to reject the project because what is IRR? IR is, IRR is a maximum capacity for project to earn. So if the project is earning more than the cost of capital, of course, that is a beneficial for any organization. And that is why we used to accept or reject the pro proposals. Our decisions used to based on IRR. Am I right? And IRR is a trial and error method. We should find out with the help of trial and error interpolation method that what will be the maximum percentage a project can earn. On the same lines, we need to understand the concept of yield to maturity. There is nothing new concept. Everything is same. Same present value factors, same discounting rate. Everything will be same. But a light difference will be here we used to do for a project. And here we will do for bond valuation a small question is also there in your module i would like to discuss on the same so have a look on the same uh, in your module you have a question that is illustration number four and that illustration number four is talking about yield to maturity only ytm approach i would like to read the question for you all have a look to the question this is question number four on your page number 4.12 of your uh, module and what this question says, have a look. Industrial Development Bank, IDB, issued zero interest dip discount bonds of face value 1 lakh, each issued at 2500 and repayable after 25 years. Compute the cost of debt if no corporate tax. Now, what we need to understand from here? See, we have already calculated cost of debt capital. In the chapter of COC, we know how to calculate the cost of debt capital. Since uh, there are two types of debentures, one is redeemable and second is irredeemable debentures. And we know the formula of both the redeemable and irredeemable debentures. In case of irredeemable, it will be KD is equal to interest percentage or interest 1 minus tax divided by net proceeds into 100 and in case of redeemable it used to be KD is equals to interest amount 1 minus tax plus RV minus NP that is redemption value minus net proceed divided by N whole divided by RV plus NP divided by 2 into 200. This is how we used to calculate the cost of debt capital under the chapter of COC. Am I right, boys and girls? Now, yield to maturity, there's a little slight difference in the concept and what does it want to say? 
understand this question if you see the company is issuing some bonds there's an issue of some bonds and which type of bonds are there they are deep zero interest deep discount bond now what do you mean zero interest one thing i understand the company is not going to give any interest on the sale oh my god sir if the company is not giving any interest why the people are purchasing boss there's a feature of this deep discount bond what is the feature of the deep discount bond that you pay a very small amount see the investor need to invest only rupees 2500 today means in the present term the investor will give to the company only 2500 and the company will give a big amount of 1 lakh rupees at the end of 25th year means normally what is the nature of bond bond is also one of one type of your debt capital am i right which has very less risk and there is fixed interest payment and fixed principal redemption maturity period is fixed everything is fixed as we know that debt capital is an secured credit for the company so what happens in the bond valuation in especially in case of deep interest discount bond company do not pay any interest company will charge a very nominal amount that is 2500 at the time of issue means presently the investor is to invest only 2500 and at the end of 25th year they will get 1 lakh rupees in hand so we need to calculate what is the cost to the company how much percentage the company will bear because company is taking 2500 from the investor and will redeem 1 lakh rupees at the end of 25th year so what is the cost of capital how much investor will be earning and what will be the cost to the company that is known as yield to maturity yield how much earning till the date of maturity that is why the concept name is yield to maturity have you understood boys and girls say yes or no so how to calculate this thing have a look it's very, very easy to calculate the bond is issued at the bond is issued at rupees 2500 value so can i say this is the net proceeds and as you know very nicely and properly what do you mean by net proceeds the amount which is received by the company from the investor at the time of issue very simple what do you mean by net proceeds the amount received by the company from the investor at the time of issue so at the time of issue the company is getting 2500 from the investor okay what is the redemption value the redemption value that is 1 lakh rupees which is going to be paid after 25 years that means the life of the bond is life of bond is of 25 years very simple now as we have learned in class and the students who are not innovative students a small gift for you and we learn this concept in this manner how we learn this concept that today I am standing at zero means it present and this is 25 years that is the future event or the future date so if i invest one rupee today what will be the amount after 25 years this concept is known as going from present value to future value and whenever we go from present to future it is known as compounding effect we multiply the money will increase and we multiply in such a scenario but when we come from future to present it is known as discounting model which we have learned in our concepts of dividend decision discounting model where we divide so here we are going from present to future that means today we are going to invest 2500 and after 25 years we are going to earn 1 lakh rupees or we can say other way around the company is taking 2500 from the investor today in present days and is going to give 1 lakh at the end of the year now two small formulas over here as i told when we go from present to future we compound and then we come from future to present we discount discount means divide compound means we multiply so if you want to find out future value we say present value into y into going from present to future so multiply 1 plus r rate of interest divide upon number of years and whenever you want to find out present value future value upon y upon divide 1 plus r raised to l am i right students there are two small formulas on which basis we can do the work now i can say since i have present value as 2500 we are going to invest today and future redemption value is 1 lakh rupees so i'll use a formula 
फ्यूचर वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू प्रेजेंट वैल्यू इन टू वन प्लस आर रेस टू एन नाउ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू वी नो टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड फ्यूचर वैल्यू इज वन लैख रुपीज एंड वन प्लस आर रेस टू एन सो वी डोट नो हाउ मच परसेंटेज हाउ मच कॉस्ट विद टू द कंपनी एंड दैट आर बी नीड टू फाइंड आउट दैट क्वेश्चन मार्क वही है बिकॉज वी नो वन लैख इज द फ्यूचर वैल्यू टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इज द प्रेजेंट वैल्यू वन प्लस आर द रेट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट वी डोट नो और द कॉस्ट वी डोट नो वी नो ओनली दर्स दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव इयर्स नाउ डूइंग हाउ टू सॉल्व दिस विल पुट न्यूमरिक ऑन वन साइड वन लैख डिवाइड बाई टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस आर इज टू एन विच इज ट्वेंटी फाइव इयर्स दैर फॉर फोर्टी इज इक्वल टू वन प्लस आर इज टू ट्वेंटी फाइव Now the big question is how to solve this. Am I right? Of course, this will be solved by trial and error method. There is no other option available. Interpolation method. We need to find out with the help of trial and error. So what I'll do, as what I say has also done, since the difference between present value and future value is quite big, quite huge, I can try with any of the rate. For example, what I say I done will do in the same manner. We'll consider that the rate of interest. Or the cost to the company. I should not say rate of interest to be very specific, but in a very layman language, that how much company has to bear, what company will bear will be the income to the investor. So rate of interest for investor and cost to the company, cost of debt to the company, and it will be the rate of interest for the investor by default. That this much percentage we earned on the bonds. So let us assume. Let us take an example. If we take fifteen percent is our rate of interest, so it will be one plus point one five raised to twenty five. So one point one five raised to twenty five, and you know how to calculate. You will get an answer of thirty two point nine one nine. Thirty two point nine one nine. Now that means if I invest one rupee today, understand properly. If I invest one rupee today. At the rate of fifteen percent for twenty-five years, I'll get thirty-two point nine one nine, which is less than forty. Means for sure we are earning more than fifteen percent. Students, are you understanding? If I invest one rupee today at fifteen percent rate of interest for twenty-five years, I'll be earning thirty-two point nine one nine. But if you see over here, I'm earning forty rupees. So that means we are earning more than fifteen percent. We need to go one percentage, two percentage above fifteen percent, and that is why I'll take if sixteen percent, one plus zero point one six raised to twenty five, one point one six raised to twenty five. It will be how much? Forty point forty point eight seven four. That means we are earning somewhere between fifteen and sixteen percent. We are earning somewhere between fifteen and sixteen percent. I'm not earning more than sixteen, but I'm earning more than fifteen percent. Means it is somewhere between fifteen and sixteen percent. It is same like your IRR. How we used to do in IRR? We used to find out discounting rate by trial and error at different different discounting rate, and we used to stop at that discounting rate wherever NPV used to be negative. Same way, I'm understanding from this concept that my these bonds are not earning more than sixteen percent. The cost to the company will not be more than sixteen percent. It will be definitely less than sixteen percent. Students, it's very clear to everyone. Am I right, students? Say yes or no. So one thing, we are earning more than fifteen, but less than sixteen, and we will find out an exact rate between fifteen and sixteen. How to find out? Same logic. How we should write in IRR? In IRR, we should write out lower rate plus NPV at lower rate divided by. NPV at lower rate minus NPV at higher rate into higher rate minus lower rate. In the same manner, we'll find out the rate over here. Now, your lower rate will be fifteen percent. This is my lower rate, LR lower rate. Sixteen will be my higher rate, HR. So my lower rate is fifteen percent, and my higher rate is sixteen percent. So, how we should find out NPV in the same manner we will do. We will say, how we should find out NPV. We should write PVCI minus PVCO. So here it will be 
32.919 minus 40. So it will be negative how much? Minus 7.081. And here it will be positive. PVCI minus PVCO. It will be 40.874 minus 40, which will be 0.874. So using the formula, you will get lower rate is 15 percent plus minus 7.081 divided by minus 7.8.81 minus 0 0.874. We are getting NPV at higher rate 0.874 into 16 percent minus 15 percent. And if we solve this equation, we will get 15.89 means this is the cost to the company. I can say this is the cost to the company, the cost of debt or we can say this is the maximum the investor will earn from the bonds. Is it clear to students say yes or no? Am I very clear? So this is the concept of yield to maturity which is solved in the same manner, same fashion to your IRA. Thank you students. Hope so you like this concept. Thank you everyone.